uh, Board of Trustees, Village of Webster, for its regular uh, meeting. And um, if you would stand with me, Heather, would you please lead us in the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Be seated. The uh, first order of business tonight, I would like to read a proclamation. Uh, this is um, the uh, Historic Preservation Month. And we did have a proclamation that appeared in the Webster Herald, but officially and formally, the village of Webster uh, proclaims that whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth, revitalizing <coughs> neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability, and whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, for Americans of all ages, in all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds, and whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people, and whereas this place matters is the theme of the National Preservation Month 2018 co-sponsored by the Webster Museum and Historical Society in Webster, New York, and the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Darrell Byers, Mayor of the Village of Webster, do proclaim 2000, May 2018 as National Historic Preservation Month and call upon the people of Webster, New York, to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. Thank you. I would have mentioned at this time also that there are several things that are going on at the museum. Um, the Webster Historical Society uh, this year has again a plaque program. They look at different uh, historical places in both the village and the town. They have chosen six. Two of them this year are in the village. First one is at 153 West Main Street, which is the Cook Law Office. And the second one is a home at 33 West Main Street. On May 19th, the Webster Museum will be hosting an event. It's called 140 Years of Webster Baseball. The event is headed by Tom Pellet, president of the Museum and Historical Society. It was inspired by Don Kuhn, a member of the Webster High School baseball team uh, in the 1950s. They were undefeated, I believe, from 1950 to 1952. It will be from 2 to 4 at the Webster Museum on Saturday, May 19th. It's located at 18 Lapham Park. Uh, they have found a plaque in the uh, attic at the museum from uh, that era. Uh, and also there will be memorabilia as well as uh, historical um, remembrances back in the uh, back in the day. So uh, I know I have seen a picture uh, of a baseball field which was at the corner of I believe Elm and Lapham uh, back a ways, right? Yep. And uh, so baseball is part of the heritage. I know that we have uh, baseball teams that play in the summer at Chance Park and uh, yes. part of the heritage of uh, I think the village of Webster. So if you are looking for something, uh, you can stop in at the museum and see the display or 2 to 4, Saturday, May 19th at the Webster Museum. Okay. So great month, a lot of things happening um, historically here in the village. All right, we move now to section on uh, public comment. If anybody would like to address the board, please come to the podium, state your name, address, and hear from you. Okay. If there is no one who wishes to address the board, then we will close this portion of the meeting, public comment portion of the meeting, and we will move then to regular village board business. Uh, first is a resolution to approve minutes. 
these minutes are from the April 26th meeting. Uh, had a chance to look them over, uh, I hope. Any, uh, any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes as written by the clerk. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Trustee Weber? Aye. Trustee Apolito? Aye. Mayor Byer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, second item is uh, the approval of claims and warrants. If you have uh, hopefully had a chance to look them over, uh, Carl, I think you were doing them this I week. Did. I don't know who I, else. I did. Sure. I did a Tuesday. Okay. Yes. Tuesday. Uh, any um, anything that you have uh, as no, no, no good to me too. Then if there is um, nothing to bring up, then I would ask for a resolution to approve and pay the claims and warrants. <coughs> Make that motion. I second it. Trustee Apolito? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Mayor Byers? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next, we have our comp and overtime report for April 2018. And, uh, it looks like there is not a lot of addition in terms of overtime or call in, but um, and we're, they're beginning to use a little bit of the comp time. So, seven hours. Comment about it? No. Okay. Okay, uh, we are now at agenda item four, and it is a resolution to authorize the village to pay for vehicle repairs in the amount of six hundred and forty two dollars and sixty cents. <coughs> Had to do with an incident regarding uh, a wind and um, uh, catching the door vehicle. So, uh, all we've been advised to make. Yep. Any, uh, any questions? Do we want to hear how that happened? Oh, sure, if you'd like. I'd be more than happy to let you know. Uh, oh, like me, getting caught in a hurricane. Uh, the code enforcement official, who will remain unnamed, um, <laughs> was parking his vehicle and he opened his door and he opened it to the point where you know when you open the door and it holds. So that's what he did. He went to grab the folder and a gust of wind came up and took the door the rest of the way and nailed the uh, vehicle that he was parked next to. It. So that was it. And just left two tiny little, what I consider to be tiny little nicks. So, or what the code enforcement <laughs> so, so this um, is the repairs to the other car. Yeah, nothing happened to the code car. <laughs> Sorry, that's not funny. Because the other car stopped the door from springing all of Repairs in the amount of six hundred and forty two dollars and sixty cents. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Trustee Polito? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Mayor Byers. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Now will yeah. I'm being asked to sign this um, Village of Webster's annual stormwater report, and if you would like to explain this a little bit, I believe it's really something that is of significance. Uh, <laughs> well, I feel bad over because there. he's talking to him over there. I feel bad because we didn't have any public comments, so I'm going to have to actually write in my diary 
uh, dear diary, no one spoke at the meeting. I think, I think that's happened a couple of weeks now. It may have been a first. Okay. I knew you were coming and I left it off. I want to have a nice backdrop. Is he kidding me? Right? Got it? Right. All right. So, is this the code enforcement officer addressing us or someone else? Marlota Seward. <laughs> the third person. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting help from my multiple personality disorder, so quiet. No. <laughs> like the poem, voices are red, violets are blue. I'm schizophrenic, and so am I. Okay. Pay attention. Yes, I know. We all miss Al. I don't like the way he's looking at me right now. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, hi. My name is Will Barrow. I'm the building inspector, code official. And a whole bunch of other things. And one of my duties is uh, to take care of the um, our stormwater management plan, we call it. And the reason why we have a stormwater management plan is because we have what's called a speedies permit. Uh, the DEC requires us to have this permit, and it stands for State Pollutant Detection and Elimination. And the reason we have it is because we have separate storm and sanitary sewers. Okay, we're um, I remember when I first started this whole process under Bill Southwell, uh, thanks to him when he returned, he says, hey, here you go, Will, it's all yours. I said, okay, thanks. So uh, we are called an MS4, Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. And so again, part of the, uh, the requirement for the permit is that we have our own stormwater management plan. And that management plan is made up of six minimum measures. The first minimum measure is public education and outreach. Some of you may have seen, for instance, the H2O Hero in the commercials. Don't let the you know, water go down into the drain or don't put things into the drain because it goes out into the, the lakes and so on. Uh, we have uh, billboards that we put up and uh, we have events that happen at the Russian Museum and Science Center. I think they had one event at the uh, Sutter Park Zoo where the public can come and participate and learn about stormwater and also public involvement and participation which follows that very closely which was minimum measure two. Now, um, we are part of what's called the Stormwater Coalition, Monroe County Stormwater Coalition. And someone had said before, why do we pay a due to the Stormwater Coalition? Well, uh, to meet these minimum measures because through the Stormwater Coalition, there's a group of us municipalities that have formed or, or pooled our resources together in order to meet these minimum measures. And so with all these resources and all the people that are available, they put on these events to help us meet the requirements that the DEC requires us to meet. The third minimum measure is illicit discharge detection and elimination. So part of that was we mapped all of our outfalls. And then in part of mapping the outfalls every year, we inspect our outfalls to make sure that there are no pollutants going down into our storm system. So uh, John Carnavelli and somebody else, sometimes I've gone out with them, will go out every year and you want to go when it's a dry time, when there's no rain, uh, because that way if something is coming down the storm sewer when there's no rain, we have a, uh, a connection uh, illegal connection or discharge that shouldn't be discharging and then we look for color and if we see something that uh, is out of the ordinary we'll have it tested to find out just what it may be. And I know uh, Jake um, at one time uh, took care of an incident that happened in one of our commercial areas and uh, so thank you Jake. We'll go into details. Mm -hmm. uh, MS or minimum measure Four is construction stormwater management. So uh, if there is disturbance of land greater than an acre, or in our code, 25,000 square feet, uh, then we want to make sure that all the controls are in place. You know, you'll, you'll see, for instance, uh, when they were building uh, North Avenue, the apartment project there for North Ponds, they put the silt fence up, they had the pond in, all of those measures are in place and really uh, simply the rule of thumb is keep the soil on the site. So you don't want the soil leaving the site and uh, getting into our tributaries because our tributaries are stressed. 
So when all the water makes it through all these little creeks and streams, actually, I've seen maps of our creeks and streams, and they did uh, a transition over 10 years, and they've narrowed and narrowed and narrowed and narrowed because of construction. So we're trying to prevent that and making it go get any worse. And of course, with that comes the stormwater pollution prevention plans, like I mentioned. <laughs> Minimum measure five is post-construction stormwater management. So now what do you do? Uh, everything's in, the ponds are there, they're supposed to be functioning uh, the way that they were installed. So every year we require that they be inspected. So every pond that we have uh, that is within the village, we usually have a stormwater management plan, or not a plan, it's a <coughs> maintenance agreement uh, that requires them to take care of their stormwater facility, whatever it may be, because we have a couple of actually underground facilities with uh, a filtration system. Those also have to be inspected. Um, and so we send a letter out every year and make sure that uh, um, a design professional uh, handles that. And then uh, after that, finally, is minimum measure six, which is pollution prevention and good housekeeping for municipal operations. So. Uh, this year, we're up for what's called a facility audit. Uh, so we're going to go through with someone from the county, and uh, we're going to be going through all of our uh, municipal buildings and where we park our trucks and everything like that uh, to just really monitor how we're having, you know, taking care of our own house, good housekeeping measures. Um, and also, that's uh, how much salt we put on the road. We, we pay attention to that. Uh, the street cleaning, that's extremely important because when they're going through and cleaning up the gutters, that's less things that are going down the drain. Uh, right now, uh, the sewer department is flushing the lines and cleaning the lines as they go along, so that's good. And uh, last but not least, all of this, uh, the annual report that you'll be signing, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, is the requirement that the DEC has for us to tell them that we're actually doing our job that's going to be available online. So, are there any questions? Um, anything that is uh, washed and taken the DPW garage, put into the drain, back into the storm sewer? Nope. That is into the yeah. sanitary sewer? No, into the sanitary, yes, not the storm. Okay. Uh, okay. Only storm is a no-no. Only those um, uh, boxes that are along the street, primarily, take the storm. Yeah. So. And the reason why this is so important, as you may well know, is anything that goes into the storm sewer sort of goes directly into the lake, eventually, which is our drinking water. Mm -hmm. Even when it was an aquifer, it was our drinking water. You know, it may have had a little filter in between, but still it comes from the lake. Mm -hmm. so. so when you see those little drops of oil along the street? Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. and also the, um, the little... Uh, Stickers or whatever. Yeah. The decals, decals that are each one of the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the drain unless that was part of our uh, one of our uh, requirements for. Is that the elementary schools go out to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's great. They go out in groups. The buses bust them in. We have like a, a little training session with them uh, in the school, and then when they come out, we train them how to use the glue. And because you don't want, you know, a bunch of elementary kids with glue just having a ball, so uh, <laughs> they are monitored, and uh, they had a great time, and they did a wonderful uh, thing for Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bob. I will sign this then at the end of the meeting, Bill. Thank you. <coughs> we are moving now to, um, oh, we need a resolution for me to sign it, I guess. Can't sign it unless I'm authorized to do so. So, if, um, I would entertain a motion uh, by the board to um, allow the uh, mayor to sign this uh, stormwater uh, report. I'll second. Trustee Apolito? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Mayor Bites? Aye. Motion passes. All right. Item 6 is a resolution to authorize Joe O'Neill to attend municipal court training in Albany at a cost not to exceed $1,040. <coughs> 
$400 of which will be reimbursed back to the village. Uh, if you remember, um, she, we spoke to this a uh, number of meetings ago, and uh, this is part of a certification process, but she was awarded a uh, scholarship mm -hmm. right, for this, and so out of that total, there will be 400 <coughs> coming back on her successful completion yes. and everything, so that will reduce it significantly. So if um, I may, uh, have a motion to um, authorize Joe Neal to attend municipal clerk training in Albany um, at a cost not to exceed $1,040. Is it a four-day deal? In the um, packet, I think it said 40. I can double check. <coughs> Make it a motion. I'll second. Trustee Abolito? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Mayor Bites? Aye. Motion passes. It is July 15th through the 8th of March. So um, I'll be attending that next year. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 40. If you allow Okay. Okay. Is he saying no? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Public uh, notice. Just to let you all know that um, serial bond principal and interest payment on the bond obtained in 2012 for $800,000 will be made in the amount. $5,843.75 on May 15th, 2018. This bond was issued upon financing of the sewer outfall, which was a cost of $300,000. The street sweeper purchase, $180,000, which is currently fully paid, and the milling and paving of roads and parking lots for $320,000. So, just a note that uh, this principal and interest payment will be made on um, May 15th for the amount of $5,843.75. Okay, we'll move on to our report from our attorney. Don, do you have anything for us this evening? Um, nothing legal related other than the uh, upcoming executive session, but on uh, <coughs> On Tuesdays, I participate in, at Barry's in the village, there's a running group, you know, and uh, which, which I go to. And now that the weather is nicer, there are several people that ride their bikes up there before they run. And they were inquiring whether or not and why there are no bike racks anywhere along Main Street or they were running about parking their bikes. And I said, well, let me uh, mention it to the village board and see if there was ever any thought to uh, putting in some kind of bike rack somewhere. How much money is involved in this Barry's group? You can run anywhere from two miles to five miles. People around the corner and right back to Barry's. <laughs> some from your and table to the bar. <laughs> yeah. Leave your beer on the table. And, and, yeah, right. And you get a dollar off your pint when you're something as an incentive. <laughs> but right now people are are like right. locking their bikes to the to the fence that Barry's has there. That is a good question. Uh, as a spokesperson for the group, uh, you can tell them that we will give that consideration. See if we can and one of one of the people that runs all the time with us is Missy Rosenberry. And she said if you can did show she will Play up the bike racks if you, uh, you know, if you were inclined to figure out a place to put them. I think it's just tie the bikes around all the big planners. I don't think he's like that. Put some hangers on the planners. <laughs> you can put some stuff right on the side of those planners and tie it down. Sure. Well, no, it's a book with those things. Once they're full, they're full. Well, they have those nice I think you could attach right these racks right, right, right to very good. Yeah. Yeah. Creative design ones that yeah. Um, yeah. They, they got look artful as well as yeah. functional. So like right. at University yeah. Avenue, they have right. those. You can't put and peed those in the sidewalk. You know, right. Pardon me? Can't be in a sidewalk right away. With, well, you don't want it in the middle of the sidewalk, but. No, but you still have to have a certain uh, 
Can you get grants for that? Is that like they so might have to be removable. You know, somebody who put them seasonably, you know, you know, up. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Like when well, if this is going to affect the Christmas lights, I don't even want to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> we can put like that right in the lights. <laughs> Make the wheels look like they're spinning. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not a bad idea, though, I guess, to have a couple. I mean, there is one on Lapham uh, when you'll pay phone. Um, yeah, oh, right. Why right not? It's to be right. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's a little farther. Yeah, Next to where, where the bike shop was. Yeah. We yeah. got to make it get a little extra yeah. 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 Where the bike shop <laughs> was. You can ride there. There's a paper. Quick comment. Well, we'll look into that. Uh, see what we can do. Thank you. Um, Jake? There is a few things going on. Uh, the Park Avenue and Lapham Park sidewalk replacement has begun. Um, they're probably about three quarters of the way, maybe even a little more down Park Avenue. They started yesterday. Um, they're, they're going along pretty good. Yeah, they are. So we should have, you know, by the middle, of the weather permitting, by the middle of next week, should probably have all the sidewalks in, start to open up the, you know, the park have early next week, park have driveways, put the rehab, get those things going. So um, everybody's been wonderful. I drove on my way here. Everybody's on the opposite side of the street, all parked on, you know, one side. Some emergency vehicles can still get through and things. It was uh, it's really nice, especially the streets with curbs. To, tendency, I think, sometimes to park out a little bit to let your passengers out, um, and it ends up narrowing down the middle a lot, so um, everybody's been working uh, really, really well with us over there and with the crew. Um, North Avenue project also started yesterday. Yesterday was a busy day. Um, they're going to start with, they're putting in some of the light bases and conduits and, and starting with the electrical portion of it, so um, that's going on. Um, there's also... I participated for the majority of it until we had an issue that I had to run to but a webinar on the urban and community forestry grants and a round of those have come out. Um, so we'll get some more information and scope different things we want to do. They're out now. Um, they're due middle or beginning of July and they would plan on announcing the awards in October, um, which means it will probably be following June or so when they get the contracts together, I'm assuming. So I haven't heard that, that time frame, but that's been my experience with some of them. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a gap between, hey, you got the money, and um, now, you, uh, now you can start to, to spend. So there's little, very many of those you, you can't spend until you have it. Um, that was so the Main Street grant from last night's discussion? No, this was a different one. This is a... The urban community is what we did for the um, the tree inventory that we did before. You can apply for tree management plans. I think that um, a real good one for us might be tree planning, and that's like a 75 percent. Um, that's fine. <laughs> 75 percent, um, 25 percent um, uh, match. So we can and, and we get grants of about fifty thousand dollars. So. Um, and plus, in our 25% would be, you know, 12 five on top of that. So um, if we, whatever, you know, whatever we applied for. Um, so yeah, we could get a lot of trees and, and um, get a lot of stuff done. So we're looking at that a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper. We definitely plan on making a uh, application for it, just figuring out what the best approach is. And I guess one that kind of straddles the fence of both. We went to a training this morning. There's a New York Alert program. Um, it's part of the Super Pollution Right to Know Act. Um, the New York Alert program, that's something that'll come up and tell people who get on the DC website and sign up for alerts if there's a sewer overflow or things like that, they'll be notified. Um, there's a requirement within two hours of it if there's a spill or something like a release. Uh, to make notification in four hours. There's a new system that they're getting. Their vendor, the state's vendor, their contract with the vendor expired, so they're getting a new vendor. And um, they had some training on that new program today. So John and I were out and went to Syracuse this morning for that in the morning. So it looks like it's going to be pretty easy to do and 
Um, you can even do it from your phone in that now too. So not that we really have. I think I used it one time. So in the past, I think she said it started in 2013 when they had the uh, with the requirement that sewer pollution. I think it was May 1st, 2013. That's the sewer pollution right to no act started. So in that five-year time period, I think I, I think we had one that we uh, I think it was up in a little more track and there was no overflow of uh, a plug in a main that was coming out. So um, some some municipalities and some systems use it a lot. We well, fortunately do not. Um, and then for the sewer department only, there's just going to be more information coming with the ferric chloride building. John's working um, real hard on. We had a, an inspection on the ferric chloride um, building, the secondary containment. You might recall a few years ago, there was a request in to get the secondary containment, or we talked about taking the roof off, pulling the tank, and lining the inside, and that got uh, shot down, and now the DC is saying we have to do something. Um, we looked into getting totes, for the time being until you know we look at it if there's any project going to happen in sewer look at getting totes that we do but it's more than three times the cost of the ferric chloride it's about a buck a gallon now it'd be three i think it was 320 or 340 a gallon if we got it in totes so that's not a great long-term solution or anything we want to you know it's expensive um so we're looking at what we can do to you know minimize that we're trying to find somebody that could you know crane or we can get those off there's uh, span creek, if you're familiar with span creek, on the roof of this building. Um, we, I, I talked to John about maybe we can take the span creek off and frame up a, a roof on there. You can put a ledge around and, or a, a, a plate on it and just have all you need is a flat roof, you know, with a little bit of a pitch on it. He said they had a wooden, uh, wooden roof on the building before and it rotted off. They had a, I think there's a little bit of fumes. But their the wooden roof didn't last in that building, a lot of moisture too. Composite didn't really last. So the concrete's what they decided to, to put on that building. So um, that uh, so that's we just gotta get that. I guess there'll be more information coming about that. So um, wasn't that part of the study? Yes. Yep. So if we are going to move we did move to say we're going to move ahead with the repairs that were suggested in that study. I would think they, would they hold on that? Yeah, so that's going to we're going to have that come up within the next month, two months and a half. That's the discussion that we started to have. Is that there might be something we're certainly not not sure, but there might be some some change or some movement. I think we were in a similar situation when they did the last inspection a couple years ago, or yeah, I think it was a couple years ago, and we had plans and we had it in the budget, and um, I don't think anybody here, but it was removed um, out of the budget, and oh no, oh, that was, there was a better way, and then nothing. nothing. Um, so that um, I, I, they didn't seem wonderful without concrete, you know, you know very, very uh, heavy with that, I guess, without concrete plants. Um, and even then, they, so they want something. They want to be updated and let us know what our plan is, and that's, I guess, in development because our original initial thought was, all right, let's get it unloaded, we'll get some totes, and then we can kind of hold on that for a while until. We decide what which way we're going, um, but that's not very cost effective. So we're, you know, looking into you know what it would be to remove the span creek and ideally pull the tank and just coat the inside like we planned on a couple of years ago. So let's see what they. I got a couple of questions for you, Jake. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of residents have asked me about the four trees that were cut down on Lapham. Yeah. And uh, they were saying, geez, I don't think that they were diseased or whatever. And I told them that I would get back to them because I wasn't sure. Right. But uh, they're in the way of the sidewalk. Three quarter replacement. Work. Yeah. yeah. The, I sent out uh, an email too because I did get some questions. 
and I sent an email to the board um, to try to put all the information, because I'm assuming you guys, especially the ones that live close by, would be getting questions. Um, the plan was to, to limit, uh, you know, avoid putting any trees down on, in the whole project if we could. Uh, Park Avenue, we had room behind. We could shift things back a little bit, and if we didn't, we're going to even try to work with the homeowners there to say, you know, let's get an easement on if we have to move the sidewalk back a little bit. Fortunately, we had enough room to be able to keep it within the right of way, but to save the trees. Lapham Park had some certainly some challenges there with the there's let's try to remember four or five houses between you know Elm and Park Ave. And I think three of those have steps coming down. So that adds yeah. another element that limits how much you can move them. Uh, the trees, one of them is in not wonderful shape and the way the roots were, it's growing in an area. Um, the tree was probably this big around and it's growing in an area about like this. And the sidewalks and the um, driveways were getting beat up pretty good. We didn't want to get in a situation where we cut the roots, be able to put the, the sidewalks in, even, even sidewalks that weren't any wider. If we had to excavate down and get the sidewalks laid back down, and that's going to give us roots. Now we make a pretty dangerous situation with it, especially on the west side of them. You know, with the wind typically out of the west, we're removing all the anchor on that side. So, um, but we had plans for three of the trees because of that, because of roots, because of the way they were lifting, and limitations on room to remove those three trees. When the contractor who was there, we've always had great luck with. We we're really happy with. Um, he, had, he was up in the bucket and did ground guys. He spun around, got this tree, and went to get, you know, he got tree number one and went to get tree number two and got number one and a half instead and uh, started cutting it in the ground. I don't know why the ground guys, there was a communication error somewhere. Um, the trees were all sprayed and marked, and and I think he had talked to someone shortly before that and said, yeah, 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 these ones, that one's saying it's not even marked. <coughs> up in the air, you get a different perspective and focus on what you're doing. He felt terrible, um, which he should. And told him that, but the, uh, you know, it's a it down a human error, I guess. He cut down the wrong tree, or almost had it down. And by the time we, by the time we got, uh, we got there and discussed it with him, it, it would have been really stupid looking, yeah. frankly. So we just had to take the rest of it down. And we talked to the homeowner. They're going to, you know, grind the stump, doing everything. And that tree they're not charging us for, and they're going to plant another one. Yeah. So obviously, it's not going to be as tall, but it's the best that they can do. That's the unfortunate part of their job is if you make a mistake, there's you know it's 50 years before it's uh, before you can make up for it. So it's kind of like when I had my surgery, the doctor said cut here. Yeah. Um, second question: I noticed uh, that you purchased the, cha the chain for the cemetery. Fence. Yes. How's that coming along? That is coming frustratingly slow. I've been I've called the gentleman with the locust post that I got a hold of and ordered him from a few times, and the conversation typically goes like this: Hey Gary, one of those things will be ready. Oh yeah, how many do you need again? They're almost ready. How many do you need? So whatever I ordered. Well, it's in my truck, and there's always machine running. Um, you know, he's a really really nice guy to talk to, but he's not. Uh, <laughs> it's, I have no opportunity to email them or any of that technology that we enjoy today. Yeah. Um, so I just saw his name on my desk again because I made myself a note. I saw it earlier today, but today was a manic Monday and a Thursday, so I did not get a chance to call him. Um, right. But yeah, it's, and I see the bucket of chain when I'm walking through the when I'm walking through the garage too. So that's getting there. Well, maybe you'll have a chance to rust a little bit before you start. No, it's black. Oh, it's bad powder coating. <laughs> Hopefully not. <We're> really bad. <laughs> and finally, uh, village cleanup ends tomorrow evening. The uh, well, the brush pickup. So I was driving around. and I saw there was still a lot of brush. Yeah, we're, well, it doesn't. It, if we make one trip through the village, that's what we always try to tell people. Have it out that Sunday night. Um, and surprising, the number of piles we missed. Um, <laughs> oh, it was out there when you drove by. <laughs> like, okay. But um, if we tell everybody have this stuff out Sunday night and then we'll make one trip around and we'll get it, you know, we get it cleaned up. Some weeks uh, or some months we can do it in a day and a half or, or a day, and some months it takes a week and a half. 
Uh, we, had, we added in a leaf pickup this, this month, and we've never done a spring leaf cleanup before. Um, that, that took about a day or a little less than a day. Um, and then we had to swap the box over and stuff. And that went pretty well. There wasn't huge piles we were able to go through the village. There was a good number of piles out, so people did take advantage of it that I was happy to see. Um, but then we, you know, we got rid of that material and we started doing the brush and there were some, there's some big piles. And that's normally, it's the June one that's worse because everybody has three days off right before we pick up. So there's a lot of tree trimming on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, so yeah. I'm a little nervous about uh, what's gonna happen next week. But right. somebody brought us a, 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 a um, brush chipper to try uh, too. And it was, uh, it was, it was really nice, um, but it was a little, a little more than we need, I think, at least money wise. <laughs> but it, uh, that helped make up a little bit of time too. It was a big 15-inch drum thing, and he was showing us different features on it. He had it as a, one of the salesmen a demo thing, and um, we were talking about brush chippers. So he had it at the show, and he said he'd bring it out and had a big cable. We can winch piles and bring them in. And, um, I'm afraid that little short four hour or six hour period we might have spoiled some people so hopefully they forget about it soon. We got a lot right. of compliments. <laughs> so on another yeah. one, I, I, I heard a rumor that you have completed a great accomplishment in your life. No, I haven't done much. No. Um, I just heard a rumor and you should be proud of it so Jake has uh, just obtained a bachelor's. Congratulations. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, a quick turnaround on the last one. How many years did it take you? Well, I told Kyle, and my associates and it took me seven years, and this one was three, so he said, shouldn't they call you doctor? <laughs> yeah, actually, you should be, we should be calling you doctor Smiley. Huh? Yeah, probably. I certainly went long enough. <laughs> like, Heather's going. Make a note of it. Did I have the handwriting already? You do. Well, congratulations. That's, that's awesome, Jim. Thanks. Well, then you're not going to jerk anymore. Al, congratulations to you as well. Thanks, man. Look at the way he looks at you. He's staring at me the whole night. Stuck with it, man. Al, you want to pose for the camera? Any other questions? Uh, I would like to mention that uh, the Chords of the Genesee, which practices over here at the Harmony House, um, <coughs> is hosting their spring show. Um, there are a number of groups that will be participating, as well as, of course, the Chords of the Genesee. It will be also on Saturday, May 19th. Uh, this will follow. This at 7 o'clock. Uh, the museum is from 2 to 4, so you can make an afternoon and evening of it. But uh, it will be at uh, Penfield High School uh, this year that they're hosting it there at 7 o'clock. $12 for students, $14 each for a party of 10 or more, $16 each for a ticket before the show, $18 at the door. They have quite a lineup, I believe, of entertainment for the evening, so you can make yourself a uh, good time. Go to the museum. Stop at one of our fine restaurants in between 4 o'clock and 7, 6.30, and show up at Penfield for 7. Make an evening and day of it. So that'd be great. You can take Al with you. Pardon? Yeah, Al's yeah, going. Yeah, Al. Said he was coming. She was going, too. All right. Uh, if there is um, Nothing else, I would announce that uh, the next village board meeting will be on April 20, or May 24th, excuse me, 2018. Um, so we will be uh, coming out of okay, coming out of the executive session and uh, adjourning at that time. So I think all announcements are made. Anybody else have an announcement? Okay. Then I would entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss the pending litigation regarding the Ho Jack Court. I have a motion. I'll make that yeah. motion. <laughs> <Sorry>. I'll second it. <laughs> Trustee 